Hey guys, my name is Emma and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing the bibliotherapy sessions video for the month of April and the book that we read for that is Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield. Now if you've no idea what I'm talking about, the bibliotherapy sessions is an informal book club that me and Amy from Amy Gets Lit have where we buddy read a book and then we give each other a bunch of questions to talk about that book on camera. So this was the book for April as I just said and basically Amy sent me five questions and I'm going to use them to talk about this book. So so for those of you who don't know about this book, this is a kind of magical realism slash historical fiction type thing which is set based on the River Thames and the, the kind of hook premise of the story is this inn on the River Thames that is known for storytelling. One day this man comes through the door holding in his arms a girl that looks to be dead and they've both been kind of dragged out of the river and he pretty much faints and is all like busted up and messed up. But when then the midwife or nurse turns up to the inn it turns out that the girl isn't dead or at least is no longer dead and the story kind of continues from there and now i'm going to go through the questions so question one from amy is basically at the beginning of the book the very first uh, page talks about the different inns that are along the river thames and what they are known for because this final inn is known for its storytelling and she's asking essentially which inn is the one that i would like to spend the most time in we don't really get to see any of these inns ever again it's not really kind of a key point to the story but for me personally um the red line is known for music and constantly having fiddlers playing and people doing kind of live gigs and things like that and I really love live music I can't play myself I'm pretty much tone deaf but I absolutely adore live music and I really love it when there is live music in a pub especially when it's kind of inoffensive not crazy loud live music I really like some of the sort of trad music you can get I'd say the red line the second uh, question from Amy is uh, what character did you most identify with and I most identified with Rita, our midwife slash nurse character. So I think Rita is one of the most interesting and strongest characters of the book. She grew up in a convent and she was like learning medicine from the nuns and was supposed to kind of stay there forever and learn to be a nun but then basically decided that she could do more good being out in the world kind of using her medical knowledge and her medical abilities so off she goes and leaves leaves the the church and instead kind of supports god and and shows her devotion to god through her work out in the local community and i think that she's just such a she was a really strong character in terms of like knowing what that she wanted and as a midwife she'd seen some pretty horrendous stuff especially given we're thinking like this is historical fiction so modern medicine not a thing and for her it was really important that she never become pregnant because she never wanted to risk that happening to her and those were some really staunch and strong morals that I, I, I supported and I really liked about her and it was really interesting to see a character and a female character express those kind of concerns in a book and talk about the dangers of pregnancy because female characters are often cast as like being baby crazy and like you know oh your biological clock will kick in and then you will want a child or like opposing children because they don't like children and don't like the implications for their life whereas it was really nice to hear a character talk about the concerns about pregnancy itself and the act of giving birth to a child because I feel like it's something that just still is very like smoke and mirrors and not really talked about very openly and there's somebody who is genuinely very freaked out and concerned by the process of pregnancy and for me it is a real mental block about the concept of having children and it's something that I kind of grapple with whether I actually would want to do that or would want to adopt because I don't know whether it's something I personally want to put my body through my family don't have a great track record with dealing with pregnancy very well I don't know if it's something I I could cope with or would want to try and cope with it was lovely to see that talked about in a book really openly and interestingly. Question three is basically this book is really based on folk tales and storytelling and the idea of there being like folklore that people all buy into and Amy's basically just asking did I believe in any growing up and I'm sure I did but I can't think of a single one that springs to mind which is crazy. Um, I guess not potentially folk tales as such but I've always loved reading and loved stories and I definitely as a child would get very invested in stories and probably take them too seriously and I think it's something that I still struggle with today. Um, it's one of the reasons why I don't tend to um, expose like horror or jumpy things because I think my brain has a really hard time separating out 
um, the story from reality and then I get like awful night terrors and all sorts of horrendous things obviously rationally I know the difference but like I think my brain subconsciously kind of mixes the two I very recently had one literally last night about um, the time machine because the Morlocks freaked the fuck out of me when reading that book so I guess in that respect it's not strictly folklore unless you maybe count Santa Claus but everyone believes in Santa that doesn't really count does it Question four is, what are your early thoughts about the mysterious girl and how did they change as time went on? I was kind of hoping for more from the mysterious girl. I, I was not hugely psyched about this book in general. I'll probably talk about that a little bit more at the end of the questions. But one of the things that I think wasn't done very well was the mysterious girl. I think that she um, ceased to be particularly mysterious and just became a bit dull. <laughs> I thought that she was very interesting when she was first introduced and the book describes her as almost looking doll-like or kind of puppet-like and oh there's a I just banged my head on my own bookcase that's fine um, and described as almost being like pristine and I was kind of hoping that they might go down that road a little bit more or you know that they just but there might be a little bit more to her and um, she never speaks in the book which is kind of part of the hook for it but it yeah it just sort of it comes up with a very mundane ending and and sort of explains her away and it all just becomes very uninteresting personally so i found her far more mysterious and intriguing at the beginning than i did at the end and question five is who would you recommend this book to and who wouldn't you recommend this book to and i guess this is a really good question to then talk about how i feel about this book in general so for me the best things about this book were how pretty its writing was and how good the characters were. I thought that the characters were very fleshed out and realistic and interesting and I thought that there was a very large cast of characters that were all still done very very well and I guess the plot did tie itself up ne fairly neatly and the writing is lyrical and gorgeous. However, having said that, I felt that the writing became a bit too lyrical in places and became very overwritten and you could kind of tell that Diane Setterfield was feeling very pleased with herself about some of her turns of phrase and I felt that that went a bit too far and the lyricalness of the writing yeah we're gonna go with that that's fine that's a word kind of got in the way of the pacing and meant that the book felt very slow for me which then because the plot wasn't anything particularly special it just becomes a case of like one couple think that the girl is theirs and then another couple think that the girl is theirs and then there's this whole like slight subplot linked with some kind of past characters going on and I won't say any more than that because I don't want to spoil it for anybody but basically it was a fairly mundane sort of domestic family thriller type thing dressed up in this like magical realism folklore pretty language kind of coat and actually I I wasn't that invested by the time we got to the end so that makes recommending it to people or not to people quite hard because my immediate gut reaction is actually I should have liked this book I thought I was going to like this book this is one of my five star predictions Olive from a book Olive love this book and normally I agree with her on lots of these things however this one just didn't really strike a chord with me so but I think that that is just me. So if you generally tend to like lots of books that have very lyrical writing and really focus on the craft of writing itself, I would recommend this because I think that you will enjoy it. And if you tend to like books that do focus on family drama, which is one that is a set of relationships that don't generally tend to interest me, which is probably why I didn't enjoy it as much, then I would recommend this for you. However, if you are somebody who is not that bothered by family dramas, like myself, I would not recommend this. I would not recommend this if you are really interested in the magical realism side of things of this book, because I think that that was barely touched on, and the magical realism was fairly thin on the ground. Yeah, so I guess that's kind of that, really. <laughs> I don't really have a crazy amount more to say about the book in particular. Um, I think that it was still a fairly enjoyable reading experience. I just wanted um, kind of different, not even more, just like different stuff from the book. Um, and I felt a little bit misled walking into it because it definitely did play up the magical realism side of things and that was a little lacking. But yes, so our next book that we are going to be reading is The Book of M, which we are reading for May. Obviously, you're more than welcome to join if you want. If so, just give us a shout down below and we can include you in some of these like question videos. I will link Amy's down below once she puts hers up. We are on different posting schedules. Uh, have a wonderful reading week. I've linked everything that needs to be linked down below and I'll chat to you soon. Bye, guys.